all of my plants in one video, including the ones in all the terrariums and all the prop boxes. Hello, welcome back to my channel, or if you're new, my name is Rose, my pronouns are she, her. Warning, this video is probably very long, so get a drink ready, or maybe do some plant chores while you watch this. Enjoy. I love plants, and I'm gonna show you all of mine currently, because we are actually renovating our house in about two weeks, for about five or six weeks, and it means I have to move a lot of my plants. I'm probably gonna get rid of quite a few plants, because there will be no light, it will be quite cold, it will be very, very dusty as well. And of course, I will also make videos about that whole process, but before the chaos starts, I wanted to capture how my plants look like now. I'm really happy with how I have them set up, so I'm a little bit sad. We always start upstairs with the full plant tours, so while I have you here, <laughs> let's just start with the one I'm holding. This is Hoya Matilda. She has flowered this year again. It seems like she alternates between years to flower. Oh, I'm also, by the way, gonna pop up a counter in the top corner because I want to know how many plants I have actually right now. I think about 150 plus terrariums and the greenhouse, but I want to be sure before the renovation, just for fun. This one does have some mealybugs still, but I'm treating it with good bugs and it works pretty well. I'm very happy with it, even though it's not growing a lot. It's hanging here underneath my skylight, which I'm very happy we got. I'm gonna hang it back up. Ow, it's stuck in my hair. Then on this corner, there are some plants that I'm definitely gonna get rid of. For example, this one, this is my Anthurium Magnificum, which I do really like, it's very pretty, but it has a virus, I think. I've tested it for all the viruses, I have a video about this, but that came out negative for everything, but still you can see here on the leaf, there are just markings all over, so I'm definitely not touching this plant, and I think I'm just gonna move it outside, maybe? Over on this side, I have a very cute begonia, I actually don't know the name of it. I got this from Ruperob a while ago, and it grew so well in my little terrarium. Can you hear the neighbor? is renovating as well. It's a beautiful begonia, but it got too big for... Oh, does it have a label? Yes! Barsaluxiae. It got too big for my little begonia terrarium, so I moved it out just to see how it went. First it went all floppy, and then it came back, and now it looks really nice again. So I'm happy. It's adjusted to normal living room or bedroom conditions, and it looks very, very pretty. I love it. I'm actually trying to adjust more plants to regular room conditions because I have a lot of tanks and prop boxes and everything, but I want to see the plants, and it's much more fun if you actually have them out, like this. In this corner is the begonia terrarium I was talking about, but also my beautiful Maranta lemon lime that was here because it was struggling with thrips years ago, and I just thought it looked very pretty here. There's a bunch of dead leaves underneath. I don't know if you can see. Browning leaves, I just leave them in. It looks really nice, I think. And it kind of gets some light from the terrarium. Mickey wanted to say hi as well. Hi, everyone. I'm quite worried about them during the renovation, but hopefully they're gonna be okay. They love the garden. I'm gonna hopefully make them feel at home in the greenhouse. Fingers crossed for all of us. <laughs> Then in this, basically it's an aquarium with some perlite at the bottom, I'm actually using the aquarium light as well, are my little begonia. And there is 23 begonia in here. On the left here, we have begonia negrocensis. This is begonia raja, which is also getting quite big. This is one of the begonia mantuk that I recently got from begonia takeaway. The ones that are not fully rooted in the pot, I'm gonna bring to you so you can see them a little bit better. Some of them have rooted in the perlite layer. So this very, very cute round begonia is Scapigera that I got from Ruperobe. They're kind of velvety with a red edge and red petioles as well. This is begonia rosia punctata, which I absolutely love. It's a little bit bright in there for it. I think I've been trying to switch the light off a little bit more, less hours of light. How beautiful is that? With bright pink dots, it's growing really well. I have several of these and I love them a lot. Here's two more babies. This is Begonia species Mantuk, Mantuk, I don't know how to pronounce. And then this is Begonia Chlorosticta that I got from Begonia Takeaway as well. Some of the pots also look like this, which I'm kind of getting used to with Begonia. This is Begonia species Dungoranensis that I got from Ruperobe. It is coming back. There's a tiny, tiny little leaf there in the center. 
And then this was Begonia Pavonina, the beautiful one that I got from Brandy, one of my friends. And it has a tiny bit of growth again. This has died back twice now and came back. So I'm not getting rid of them because begonias are much more resilient than you would think. They are very easy to die, but they're also quick to come back if they want. Then we have this beautiful pavonina that I got from my friend Felice on Dekistekia. It is growing really well. And this one, this is a tiny labisia. I wonder if it wants to focus on it because it's so small. So this is a labisia that was actually in a pot with a begonia, Darth Vaderiana, crossed with Malaco Sticta that died, <laughs> but the Labisia is still alive. So that's why I'm keeping the pots. Two more from Begonia Takeaway. This is Begonia species Baramensis. I just got these in, so I don't know yet how easy they are to grow. I just potted them up like two days ago. And this is Begonia species Julau, which I've wanted for a really long time. This is a bit of a more bigger one. This is why it was in a rescue box. There is a few bare, more like bare stems. They're a little bit wonky, but I love the shape of the leaves. Look at how beautiful these are, like little angel wings. And when Begonia Julau is smaller, I will show you actually, it has pink. I am spreading perlite everywhere. See how cute that is as a little baby? The parts that were silver on the mature plants are pink in the baby. I think there's two maybe growing here. Very, very small, so a little bit tricky to focus on once again for my camera. There you go. And then she also sent me this begonia species Sinai, which is very silvery and beautiful. These are also just potted up, so I hope they're gonna do well. This is gonna take forever. Then begonia alicida that I got from Ruperobe. This one is a little bit sad looking. I think it wasn't happy in the previous place, so that's why I moved it in this aquarium thing. Also, I feel like the plants really need some water. They're quite light. This is a beautiful one that I got from, I think, Felice as well. Someone on my birthday, I don't quite remember. Or maybe Vicky. I think it was Vicky. And the other one as well, the Pavonina. I have to change the labels because it says Felice still on the label. But look how beautiful this is. It's like dark sky with lots of little stars in it. The backs are super red, which I also love. It's growing well. This, I don't know what it is. Either, ne I think it's Negosensis but it could also be Roseo punctata. No, I think it's Negosensis. And then this one, I'm very proud about. This is Begonia Nortobaramensis with a beautiful shape and a rose silvery line on the edge. This is a little bit more of a fussy one. So I got it as a little rescue. I think it needs a stick to be a little bit more stable. You can see this leaf is melting, but there is a new leaf on the way that looks still Perfect, so I'm not gonna touch it. I absolutely, oh, you can see the silver on the end here, the pink, pink silvery line. I love this one a lot. I got it as a rescue from Ruperobe and I'm very, very happy. There's three more. This is Begonia Microsperma crossed with Stoutii, which has little bobbles, corrugated leaves. Oh, you can see it on this one. Very nice one. This I got from Ruperobe and this one as well. This is Begonia G. Wui, which grows very nicely like this, like a little tree left and right shingling up against the back of the terrarium. I love the shimmeriness of this. I hope it comes across. It is so beautiful. And then we have this one. Ah, oh, I love it. This is a hybrid of, I think, Chlorosticta and Negosensis but I'm not quite sure. I did this in an online trade with Kim. Look at how beautiful they are. This was just a small, small cutting when she sent it to me. I tried to make some more cuttings of the original leaf and it's growing new leaves. So it's doing well, it's happy. I'm very curious to hear what plant group you think has the most confusing names. I started with Aeroids and then Hoya and then Begonia. So that last one just, it's almost like there's no space in my brain anymore, but also the names seem to be a little bit more confusing than general Aeroid and Hoya names. But let me know in the comments what you think. There's perlite all over the ground. Let's move to another corner. Here in my big south facing windows, I have a few plants. This is a little propagation of Epipremnum amplissimum variegata, yellow variegated. You can almost see can you see the variegation on that tiny leaf? It already has some. Here you can see it a little bit better. These cuttings still have leaves and they are also growing, but no unfurled leaves yet. I don't know if I will keep these with the whole big renovation. I'm getting rid of a lot of plants because 
I don't know how happy they will be. This is my beautiful sport variegated Monstera. It's kind of hard to see, especially because this new leaf doesn't show any variegation, but the other plant does. Can you see it here? I don't know if you can, but there are two plants in here. Both of them did show some signs of variegation, maybe on, yeah, on this leaf you can see it a little bit better. There's a sectoral patch of green on green. I like them. I don't know what to do with them yet, but I like them. Above the bed, I made these new shelves a while ago and I'm still really happy with them. This corner became successful because of the grow lights that I installed by Soltec. I love them a lot. This whole strip is just amazing, but it does make filming a little bit harder because it's so, so bright. Let's see how we go. On the left side, we have a Hoya Linearis that is very long. Look at it. And then all the way down here, we have a Mickey. Hi. I've struggled with this one a little bit. It gets mealybugs quite easily. They seem to love the fuzzy leaves. Next to it, we have Hoya Fungi which I also really like. It has grown a lot lately and it's now also, can you see them growing some peduncles? So hopefully we will get this to flower this year. See how yellow this is? That's because of the setups that I did in my camera. Also, there's some dead leaves for sure. That is not bad. It happens, especially if you're very busy and forget to water your plants regularly. This is Epipremnum aureum neon and this is a regular philodendron scandens it doesn't really want to focus with the lights either i switched the lights off maybe this is a little bit better i don't know the colors at least seem a little bit more real then above the bed we have these two shelves full of nice plants this one especially has done really well since i moved it here these are all epiphyllums that we're not very happy in the greenhouse, but luckily inside they are much happier. Look at this one, Epiphyllum anguliger, growing really well over here, looking adorable. This is a Christmas cactus behind here and a tiny little, oh, what is this? Lebismium bolivianum or something. And then this stick cactus, some kind of ripsalis that I got for my mum many years ago and that I've kept propagating. On the left here, we have my yellow variegated Syngonium that had only yellow leaves. So I cut it back a few times and now it's finally looking good again. So very happy about that. Look at that beautiful leaf as well. Then this is my Hoya Gunungading, which is so stunning, especially when it gets sun stressed, but I also love those leaves. And over here is my little Florida ghost that I got from an import. It has a ton of plants in the pot. Doesn't want to focus on any of them, but it looks very nice. It's growing well, it's sizing up. So it's just a bit dusty, but that happens in our house, unfortunately. And then in this corner is one of my favorites. The newest leaves looks like it needs some water. It's crinkled up here, can you see? And there's a hole in it, but that's okay. This is Anthurium Velvet Mask. Here are a few more mature leaves. Look at this big one, it is so beautiful. It also has a mini plant growing on the side here and it has a flower, which I normally break off, but I'm gonna let it sit for this one. I don't know why, I'm not gonna pollinate it. Okay, let me switch the lights back on. In this small room right next to the bedroom, I only have one, no, three, four plants, <laughs> more than I expected. In the box, we have my queen anthurium. This was my little baby, but it's grown quite a lot. And my anthurium regal. Look at how beautiful he is, Reggie grew another leaf. This is the third leaf that he currently has. My plan was to keep these in a box until our new bathroom is ready, which will have high humidity, but also the right temperature because before our bathroom would get almost freezing with ice on the inside of the windows. But I'm not sure yet how that's gonna go with the renovations because this is taking up a lot of space that I could rescue or save other plants in. We'll have to see. I also have here a beautiful begonia. Is it a mantuk as well? I think it might be the same as the other one. This one I got at Botanica, the plant market with the challenge by Connie to, Connie is the shop, to grow these not in a terrarium setting. So I'm testing that out. I do see some of them crisping up. <laughs> 
Some of them still look very nice. There's another one that I have for that same challenge that's in the kitchen I will show you. And down there we have another Hoya Linearis, but it's full of mealybugs. It's disgusting. I think I'm gonna throw it away. Maybe interesting to see the grow boxes from above here and then also how much my boyfriend has cleaned up the attic because with the renovation we also at some point have to remove our bed because they're gonna redo the windows upstairs and that means we have to sleep somewhere else. It might be in the greenhouse, it might be up here just with our mattresses. It's like camping in your own house, but we're gonna do it. To show you the plants better, I'm gonna take them down from the attic for the kitchen. I would love this background to be more Instagrammable, but it is not, and I don't have time. Here is a, some kind of a peppernum penatum, yellow variegated, I think, that I bought at Botanica last year. It has done nothing. It is finally growing now. It's definitely rooted. I tried to pull it out for you, but it's rooted now, so that's good. And then my Epepernum pinnatum white variegated that only grew white leaves for a long time, but now has finally decided to do both colors, <laughs> which is so much better. This is the only thing left of Caspar. I had a very big one, took a lot of cuttings at some point, and I either sold them or gave them away, or they didn't root. <laughs> aka they died and it's underneath my north facing skylight we have two skylights one in the kitchen and one upstairs but it's not very white at the moment or like ghosty it looks more green when a new leaf comes out it definitely does have more of the ghost like things colors <laughs> and it is very mature which i really like i think this was the top cutting the other ghost just has nicer ghostly features we have one begonia that i took down the other begonias I'm going to show you up there. This is begonia species Taoyuan Kuang. It looks a little bit sad at the moment. It can get really nice blue colors, which I will show you in the terrarium. But it's rooted really nicely and I'm happy. It's still growing. I made a ton of cuttings and gave them away to lots of friends. I love this one. It is very beautiful. You just don't see it right now. It lives underneath a cloche. Then we have the grow box. With this upcoming renovation, I actually got rid of quite a few plants already. I sold I sold a bunch and I gave some away. Oh, stop it. So I went from two full prop boxes to just one. There's only a few anthurium in here. So this is the No ID crossed with Vera Kuyanam that I got from Myrta and it has grown nicely. I love the shape of these leaves. They're so different from lots of anthurium. This one is still hardening off, I think. And I think it's growing against the top a little bit, so that's why it looks a little bit um, misformed. That's not a word. That's a Dutch word. <laughs> Here you can see the roots. It could definitely use some moss against the stem, which I normally do to help the roots grow down to the soil. But it's working out because it's high humidity. It's, it's surviving and maybe even thriving. So it's fine. This is a crystallinum, I think, question mark, that I had on the sale, but nobody wanted to buy it. Literally zero bids on it. So it gets to live with me for a little bit longer. I had quite a lot of plants that I don't know the exact ID of. So that's why I'm trying to be better with labels. This is Anthurium villanorum that I actually sold. So someone is getting that quite soon. I like this one because it has the triangular petioles. I showed you most of these in the full anthurium video. If you're interested, you can check that out. We have a Magnificum hybrid here, which also didn't get many bids, so it's still with me. It's very, very shiny. I can't show you right now, but the shimmer in the veins is incredible. I got this from my friend Kat. Then I have two cuttings of a Selaginella, the really, really nice blue one from my terrarium. They are not doing anything. They're rooted but they're not growing at all. I don't know what to do to make it better because I think it's the right climate for them. I don't know exactly. If you know something about propagating Selaginella, please let me know. And the last one in here is this beautiful Forgetti. If you know me, you know I love Forgetti without any silver like this one. I got this from Schmooky and it is adorable. It's growing really well. Oh, there's a new root growing right here. Very, very cute. There's some moss I'll pop around it. And I think the other part of this plant I cut off and it's growing in the terrarium, which I will also show you in a second. It's beautiful. Then we have this box, which I have open now. I like as making a lot of noise. <laughs> Fungus gnat in my nose. Ugh. Can you not? 
I have this box open because all the plants were getting too tall for it, as you can see. And also, I don't think they need 100% humidity. I think they're fine with how they are growing now. There are six different anthurium hybrids, mostly with luxurians. This is Papillae Laminum Fort Sherman, crossed with luxurians. This is Anthurium Dark Mulan, crossed with luxurians. It's a little bit smaller. This is Anthurium Portile Indonesia, crossed with luxurians. Quite long leaves, and this has a new leaf as well that's a little bit stuck, so it looks like a little caterpillar. This is Anthurium Papillilaminum Corduroy crossed with Subsignatum, also making a new leaf back here. And the last one is Papillilaminum Old Clone crossed with Luxurians, also making a new leaf right here. Can you see it? Me personally, I'm not really into the corrugation of Luxurians, so I did see some mature ones at Botanica that were absolutely stunning, but I'm more into the smaller, more compact corrugation of... I saw a philodendron linhanhiae? I don't know how to pronounce that, but that looked beautiful. So I don't know if these will stay in my collection, especially since I'm making space. I almost forgot about these two. This is my Alocasia cupria, which is growing really well. Look at how full that pot is. A lot of babies in there as well. The light is not ideal to show you, but ooh, it is ideal to show you the ribs, the abs. This one seems to really like it underneath my skylight up there. And I also have this very tall Splendid here, which was just a propagation I was gonna give to a friend, but then it got so big that I decided to, to send her the smaller one and keep the bigger one, because this is much more work to ship than the other one. I do really love the aerial roots on this. It is so weird looking. <laughs> <laughs> then ooh, all that's left up here is some begonia propagation boxes and small begonia. Ooh, I hope it's not gonna fall. This is that begonia that I showed you upstairs, the hybrid that I got from Kim. The cuttings that I took because I really, really like that plant. And generally when I get a new one that I love, I immediately take some cuttings to make sure that it doesn't die and then I don't have anything left. I am talking from experience here. <laughs> I also took some cuttings of the Metagroa that I actually sent Kim, who sent me those other ones, in the trade because someone else was interested in them. I don't remember who it was. So now I have a ton of new baby plants for a plant I was gonna get rid of and I don't know who they were for. Stay tuned. Another propagation box. This one has the, I think the Montuk in there that I propagated as a backup for that plant that lives upstairs. And down here in the other corner are some propagations of my Begonia gogoensis, which I love a lot. I will show you a full plant in the terrarium, but I was a little bit worried that the one in the terrarium wouldn't be happy, so I made some safety propagations. Two more up here that I got from Begonia Takeaway. This is a hybrid that she created. Again, I don't have a label, so my bad. I don't know what it is exactly, though this pot is perfect to show it. These are just some storage bins that I found in the local supermarket. I'm not closing them fully though because I think they need a little bit more airflow or less high humidity than these will give. Very pink, very nice. And the second one in the same kind of storage bin thing. Ooh, this doesn't look great. This looks a little bit like it has that thing that you can get with begonia, like a fungus kind of. One leaf is definitely dying here. Whoops. I don't know what that's called. Uh, I have to ask my friends, because I've never had that on begonia before. You think there is something you can do. Luckily, it is isolated in a little pod. But this is begonia ruthiae. I didn't even tell you. So those spots are not supposed to be there. It's a very, very nice looking plant. This begonia is the other one from Connie that they, he challenged me to grow in non-terrarium conditions. As you can see, quite a few of them are <laughs> a little bit droopy. Oh, there's also a fungus on the soil. I don't think that's supposed to be there. A lot of the leaves actually are falling off right now as I'm checking it. I can definitely propagate one of these leaves because look at how beautiful that is. I forgot the name of this one, sorry. Oh, oh, so many of them are falling off. Wait, wait, Connie, it's not going well. <sighs> it's a good thing I'm checking this plant because this is what is left. Oh, no, one more. And these are all the ones that have fallen off. I'm definitely gonna propagate some of them, but on our kitchen table here, I have a few plants. I'll have to find a solution for them because this window is actually becoming our new garden door. And then we have a bathroom without a door to the outside in it. 
so I'll have to find a spot for these plants. This is my philodendron melanochrysum, which may look nice as you see it here, but actually it was growing so badly that I looped the stem around here and have it growing back up the stem here, but without any leaves for quite a while, and they were only getting smaller anyway. It definitely is not happy in my care, and I found they are quite hard to grow as houseplants. Whenever I see them in a botanical garden, they grow so beautiful. It used to be my favorite plant in the whole, all of the plants. This was my favorite one. But because I struggle so much with growing it myself, it actually got downgraded and is no longer on the list. Then we have this beautiful orchid, which I bought recently for a project. It flowered really nicely, but I didn't do the project. And now I just have another orchid again. <laughs> oh, we'll see how it goes. It's growing new roots, so that's good. It's growing new leaves, so that's good. This is just a Phalaenopsis orchid. This is a little Begonia propagation, Begonia chloronura which is absolutely beautiful. I did see these at a grower where they were huge. It was like a huge full pot of them and the leaves were five times as big as this or even bigger. I absolutely love the colors of it. And my friend did too, my not so planty best friend from when I was 15. She said she really liked it. So this is a propagation for her. Since I'm showing you everything, I'm also showing you the things that are not necessarily working out. This is a trying to grow a avocado seed and also a mango seed inspired by crystal. It's not working out this time. I used to have a ton of avocado plants. I used to have a whole window full of these. This is actually one of my boyfriend's plants, but <laughs> here we are. This is some kind of palm tree like thing. He loves them. I have no idea what it is, but he loves them. This is Hoya Wayeti Vergata, a beautiful, beautiful Hoya that I also have several pots of because my big one had root rot, so I had to start it over. And it was so big that I couldn't fit all of them <laughs> in one pot. But it's very beautiful. I love how it gets pink when it gets a little bit more sun. Next to that, we have Oli, <laughs> my Hoya Obovata, that looked really bad for a really long time. It did not want to grow. It had root rot as well. I propagated it. It didn't do anything for forever. And now it's finally started to grow again. So all these little adorable round leaves are new. And I love that it's, I looped it around and it's growing from different spots. So there's a growth point here and here. And this one is currently the most successful. It's a little bit bigger. And then down here as well, this is a new growth point. I think there might even be a new growth point down here. So I'm very happy that I propagated him. He was at flowering stage. So he flowered several times for me stunning, beautiful flowers. I love the obovata ones, but I knew that something was wrong. So I'm happy I chose to propagate and have this left. This is that bathroom door I was talking about that's gonna be closed off. It's actually gonna become a window so that all of the plants that are moving here are gonna get a ton of light and also the nice warmth that they deserve, hopefully with ground floor heating or floor heating or whatever you call it. On the side over here, we have a window that's actually gonna be closed off so we, that we can have a mirror. But currently there's a few plants living in there. This is a combination pot, three different kinds of syngoniums. There is the white variegated syngonium here. We have the syngonium red spot tricolor in there and a few tiny baby yellow variegated ones from cuttings from that plant that I showed you upstairs. I think it looks very cute. I hope it's gonna grow well. Then I have a pot of philodendron propagations, just the common philodendron from upstairs as well. And here is my first pinguicula that, ooh, <laughs> it's falling over. It has caught a lot of fungus gnats. I love these little plants, they are so cute. This is a very common one. And luckily I was able to find a few cool ones recently. And I potted them all together in this little pot. This is one of the storage bins that I had the begonia in as well. And here you can see, this is a little baby of the common one that I showed you already. And then we have three other ones. This is, Pinguicula cross vaser. It is a little bit pink. I bought it at the market in Germany, Botanica, together with this little one. This is Florian. How adorable is that? I love them when they're this organized and neat. And then this one in the center here, that is Laueana, Pinguicula Laueana, that I also recently bought at a plant market. I absolutely love these. I'm so happy with this little pot. I really hope it makes it through and 
just keeps looking so adorable and I might add some more in there. Two more in this corner. This little Mikens actually was attaching climbing up the side of the window, so that's adorable. It does show some signs of pests maybe. And I did have pests in this corner before, but the newest leaf actually looks pretty good. So I am not too worried. Actually, I'm not worried right now. That's good. Last one in this window I love. This is Philodendron Gigas. It is, I think, easier to grow than Melanochrysum and just as beautiful. This was a very small cutting when I got it. And as you can see here, it struggled a lot. It had thrips, so there's no leaves here anymore. <laughs> It was not very happy, but finally it started to become happy again. This latest leaf is quite a lot bigger. I'm hoping to extend the pole so I can continue growing it. And I just, I love it. It's shimmery, it's golden. All the things that I loved in a Melanochrysum, only it is actually sizing up and growing. Welcome to our greenhouse. Since I'm showing you all of my plants, actually quite a few of house plants live in here. This is a little pink princess baby. That I'm growing out in there. We'll see how it goes. There's definitely a few more pests in the greenhouse than there is inside, so I'm trying not to mix any of the plants. Over on this side we have quite a few palm trees and bananas that I'm not going to show you because they are my boyfriends, but I can show you this adorable little Ficus Shivriana or Srivriana, I don't know exactly how to pronounce, which I really liked and we're growing in a little self-printed pot on the wall here. Mealybug signs, but it's okay. I also have some cuttings of a skindapsis that the full plant I actually gave away to someone, but this one gets to live here. They are quite yellow. You could call them bleached because <laughs> they get a lot of light here. Actually, I can show you where they live. So this is the one on the wall. Here is the little shelf with these plants. So I have a Tradescantia here with a beautiful, beautiful shimmer. And down here I have a Hoya mini bell, which is budding up again. And these flowers are so pink and beautiful. I love them. Then we have a Colocasia Black Magic that has a bit of snail patterns on it right now. This is what the new leaves look like. I love them so much. And then next to it, the other Colocasia. This is the Pharaoh's Mask that has not been growing very well for me. When I got it from the garden center, these leaves were much bigger, but Hopefully it's gonna come back. Here is a thriving asparagus fern, which is not actually a fern, but it's really doing well. There's a very sad crocodile fern, and this is, I think, an, um, what is the Christmas plant again? The flower? I don't know. Then the living wall, we've updated a little bit. We've added some ferns in there because the bottom actually gets quite wet. This is a system from Gardena that the top we've noticed dries out quite quickly. And then the lower you go, the more water stays in there. I have some succulents in there, some different ones. Like this is the one that I also showed you inside and this one as well. And this one as well. I took a lot of cuttings from here. This is a Kalankoe. Oh, it's very bright with the sun. This is some kind of succulent that I've had for forever. And a Ficus elastica. I don't have a lot of experience growing these, but I'm enjoying growing this one. A little Pilea peperomioides and cuttings from the grandma plant that I have of the Shrek ear jade plant, Crassula something something. I also have a string of pearls here <laughs> that is not looking great but it's looking a lot better than when I was growing them inside in my house. Look at how fat these pearls are as well. <laughs> this is a very, very sad looking um, epiphyllum. So that's why I took cuttings for inside, but this still gets to live here and maybe grow out. The other side is my favorite because this is where my desk is and where a lot more plants are. Like this random combination pot of different epiphyllums and other succulents, several quite big bananas from my boyfriend's propagation station. Look at how many babies he's making. Down here lives Vicky the varicosum that I moved outside because of pest issues. Maybe you can see the mealybugs on there. There were thrips on there, so that just gets to be ignored here. Up here is more succulents. This is the sedum, uh, burrow's tail. I don't know what it's called exactly. This one is the beaver tail epiphyllum that grows beautiful flowers. It's flowered several times for me. And this one is a Ripsalis paradoxa chain, I think. It's growing well here. We have an agave, another one of the sticky plancy ones. <laughs> 
And my boyfriend's other part of that plant I showed you inside. We have some big strelitzia here, another red banana, and a red cordyline. My boyfriend loves both of those. Down here is a shelf with some aeroids that also were struggling with pests. So this is a philodendron glorious that's growing outside. I think this is also glorious. Yeah. So I have two. I didn't know that. And this is a philodendron soderoi that I'm growing on a moss pole. It's actually growing pretty well, even though it was struggling with thrips and stuff before. Then here is also a beautiful philodendron brontianum. I'm very happy with these shelves now. I'll show you the plants up close, but check out my adorable cactus shelf. I have a cactus shelf. If you've been here a while, you might remember that I never used to be into succulents and cacti, but because I love this greenhouse and the only thing that really thrives here are cacti and succulents, I got into them a little bit more. So here we have a little pot with these two blobs. I keep forgetting the IDs, but I bought these at a market, very cute. Then I have a little propagation of a Kalankoe. Kalanjoe, very nice silvery one. A tiny propagation of that other plant I showed you in the living wall. This is a cutting of my yellow variegated Adansoni that I'm gonna show you inside, but it didn't have any variegation anymore. So I cut it off and then decided to continue growing it because it rooted so fast and it was doing adorable. So it gets to live here. Then I have two Echeveria succulents that are beautiful, but I don't really know what I'm doing with them. So I guess that's the same for all the cacti and succulents. I'm very new to them, so I'm experimenting. I actually repotted this recently to have all of them at the same level. These are lithops, living stones. And then they just grew so fast that they all are uneven again. And this beauty is proving that aeroids can definitely also take a bunch of light. This is a gloriosum that I'm growing out here for my mom. And I noticed that the stem was quite long, so I cut it a few times. And there's now little baby gloriosums growing for her as well, for her new house. Then on the cactus shelf, this Lepismium bolivianum that I showed you upstairs as well. I took cuttings because the original plant was so full of mealybugs, it was disgusting. So I restarted it and it's going pretty well. This is a little Paperomia hope that has not grown at all, I think, since I got it, but it does look very cute. So then we have this Hoya fungi cutting that was not doing well for a long time. But since I started doing weekly waterings or at least weekly checks on my plants, I have ADHD, so I am very chaotic in general. And especially here in the greenhouse, I sometimes forget to water plants for a long time. So since I started remembering them, this is growing, can you see? The tendril with new leaves on it, it's actually climbing up the wall a little bit. And then we get to the actual cacti. This is a, pff, actually not a cacti, this was some kind of stapeliad, apparently, a crested stapeliad that might be growing a flower. Over here for my stapeliad knowers, that little thing, is that a flower? I'm not sure, maybe it's just new growth. They are related to Hoya and their flowers are absolutely stunning. This one I bought for my friend and it is a Cactus? I call it a spiral cactus. I really liked it because it is so organized. It's just perfect little circles. And then the other one switched into a Y shape. Like, why? I don't know. Then we have another spiral. This is actually called the spiral cactus, I think. I don't know the actual name, but it's a pretty big one. I like it. And this is a sp what is this called? Uh, something with an A. You probably know, tell me in the comments, or maybe I figured it out by editing time. This keeps on flowering and I keep on missing it. And the flowers are absolutely blue. <laughs> and the flowers are absolutely beautiful. So it's a bit of a shame. Then I have an agave that I really liked with very thin spikes and another epiphyllum anguliger that is currently growing two new shoots. Look at how adorable. And then the two most adorable ones. This is my booby cactus. The Fukuyama Mihupu, the name is so long, I still have to learn that. So cactus names are also quite hard. And this one, you, oh, I did look up the name, but this is the same as the other one that I showed you with the Y shape, only this is ours. Adorable, adorable, adorable. And you can actually see here, you can't even see them at all because it's so bright. Because it's the cactus shelf, it gets so much light, they love it here. And I love that. There's also another palm tree here and my grandma's Shrek ear jade plant. This is the original. Can you see the stems? This is what an actual heirloom plant looks like. 
very, very thick. It's like a little tree, which I love. The last plant I want to show you here, I am very, very excited about. If you've seen my shorts or reels or TikToks of the Leukokasia Gigantea Thai Giant, someone gave me a tiny baby, Natalie, thank you again. It was amazing. And it's finally sizing up a little bit, sizing up a little bit more. And this is the latest leaf. It's starting to get that nice velvet color. It might be hard to show you because it's so bright here right now. But it's definitely growing really well. We're repotting it. Oh, <laughs> we just repotted this maybe two weeks ago. Already the roots are crawling out the bottom. Might have to repot this again <laughs> very soon. I love that my boyfriend and I both love this so much because we both love the huge one that we see at the botanical gardens and it's very exciting to have our own and to take care of it together. Very excited. By the way, during the renovation, this might become my workspace and sleeping space because I work from home and they're gonna basically mess up the whole house. So I'm trying to get the cats ready to live here. Mickey seems to really like it already, luckily. This sofa that we have here is a fold-out bed. So if needed, we can sleep here. It is quite scary, but I know that we have this space, even though November, it's gonna get quite cold here. But I hope it's gonna be my safe space during this chaos of a renovation, which probably as you're watching this, I'm in at the moment. So check out my Instagram if you want updated stories of how it's going. But let's head back inside because I have more to show you. Next up are my Hoya shelves and my big terrarium. The first plant to show you <laughs> is this huge fern that lives currently on our heater, which we will need to switch on again soon because it's currently 10th of October as I'm filming this. So one more appreciation moment for this beautiful fern that I grew from very, very small. It only had just straight leaves and now it has this, all the little side angles. Down here is the little terrarium that I had for the jewel orchids, but I took them out because there was only two still alive. And then in this grow box is where I have all my baby queen anthuriums. Unfortunately, they are not doing very well. Maybe you can see here, the leaves don't look great. Also because I had thrips in here, it might be because I don't have any airflow in here. That's why I've been opening the lid a little bit more. Very, very sad leaves. So we're not looking at this, we're just closing it and I'll fix it once the house is all renovated. There's not just Hoya on the Hoya shelves, but there are a lot of Hoya. So let's go through them a little bit quick. We've seen the other one of this one already, Hoya Wayeti variegata. Same with this one, Hoya linearis. There's a real fly caught on my little fungus gnat trap and it's really sad. It's been there a while. I don't know what to do. Maybe I should just kill it. I don't like killing animals. This is my Hoya Callistophila, which is growing a little bit weird. Ha! I used a little thingy and I rescued the fly. It might have a few less legs, but it's flying again. So oh, that's a relief. Next up, we have this begonia which is the one that I was talking about before, the one with the very, very small dots. I recently moved this out of a higher humidity environment, so it's looking a little bit droopy, but I think it's gonna be okay. Hoya acuta variegata. Yes, Hoya acuta variegata. I got this from Camilla in Sweden. This one I got from Caroline, but I think it's definitely dead. This is a Hoya lacunosa laos it's not supposed to look like this i think i'm just gonna throw that away some hoya courtesy cuttings because my big one again was not very happy so i made a propagation this is randomly two plants in one pot this is the main feature this is hoya nong nooch which has a new leaf here and a tendril and then the other one is the hoya crossy petiolata splash that is growing up here it was growing against the light, but that's okay. My main plant of this was actually in the greenhouse. I didn't show you, but it was struggling a lot. It had pest issues, so I moved it outside. Then we have this Hoya Clementiorum that I got from Maut. It is stunning, but it is struggling a little bit. It was actually growing. <laughs> it was growing a new leaf. And then I realized underneath the ground was another node that was also growing. So I decided to cut it and have two plants and both of them are now not looking great. This is the original leaf that it came with, but the new leaf has died off. The other plant, I don't know. Yeah, hopefully this is gonna come back once again. This is Hoya Finlaysoni EPC 7... 
774 from Osa, also from Sweden. It's grown quite a few new leaves now, also some mealybugs because always in my house, but it's looking so beautiful and look at this long tendril. I like it a lot. Another one with a long tendril. This is Hoya Tequila Sunrise, also from Osa. Osa. It's a very, very cool one. Apparently you can also get really cool sun stress and it has mealybugs all over. Uh, assholes. But also a tendril, ooh, growing well in semi-hydro that I'm throwing on the floor now. One more on this shelf and that is my variegated Skindapsis, Skindapsis Rubicon. It's labeled. It's a pretty cool looking one. This one got a little bit wobbly, so I have it on a stick and a little bit stuck as well in my living room conditions. I really like these, even though I never grew Skindapsis before, I'm pretty impressed with how these look. This is Hoya Insularis. That is very cool looking. I showed this recently in one of the favorites videos, I think in the August one. This is a very weird Hoya. It's growing really well, actually. This whole tendril here is all new and it has two growth points. So I'm impressed with it. I like it, it's weird. Sitting next to it is my Hoya Hushkeliana Vergata. In a recent video, I was actually saying this is one of my favorites, but I couldn't find it and I found it again. I've also moved it closer to the grow light because this was growing one, very slowly, but also two, currently it doesn't ho show any signs of pink on the new growth. And that's what I love about it most. It's so cute, Hoya Hushkeliana Vergata. And the last one in that lineup, these all sit together, it's very cute, is my Hoya Thompsoni Pink. This is the hairiest Hoya Thompsoni I have ever seen. The other ones also have hairs, I'll show you my other ones soon, but this one just seems to be the most pubescent out of all of them. Also, it's grown a lot. It was a tiny, tiny cutting and it has several tendrils. I really hope to get this flowering at some point because it's nice leaves as well, but I got it for the flowers. They are beautiful. It's a lot. Are you still with me? <laughs> I bought this one at the Botanica market. I actually don't know what it is, but I have wanted it since last year's Botanica and then they were sold out. I really liked it. I thought it was a Passiflora but now I'm not quite sure. In this weird little food storage container, I have a begonia species Sarawak that I got from Felice. This one actually came from Felice and it is growing so well. I love it so much. Look at the velvet. That is just so beautiful. This is why I love begonia. Mwah. Amazing. Hey, my poopster. This is my favorite plant of all. This is my boyfriend. Come closer and show all your beautiful leaves. I think he's a shy plant. <laughs> <laughs> Look at his beautiful face. Mwah. Welcome home. In this little, another food container, I have a Labicia that I had in my terrarium that had root rot. I put it in here and it immediately rehydrated. So that part is working. I'm just not sure if it's actually rooting. I do see a lot of roots. So hopefully one day I can plant this back into a terrarium. Then we have my version of the Begonia Chloronura. This is the one that I had in the windowsill for my friend as well. Just the colors. It's so beautiful. It's also hairy, <laughs> pubescent. This is an anthurium, a really, really nice velvet one. This is a red crystallinum crossed with Goliath. And look at it. This is the newest leaf. It was really red before. Now it's a little bit less red. I have another little drink container. Mm, don't fall. With a begonia roseo punctata inside. It's beautiful and very, a lot of roots. Can you see them sticking out? The smaller the plants, the harder it is to show you. So I actually think the terrarium part of the video, I'm gonna film on my phone because my camera never wants to focus on the thing that I want it to focus on. I have a little food container. I have a lot of food containers with some moss inside that's growing. I will make a separate video about how to grow moss. Someone asked that on TikTok, I think and I finally figured it out, so I'm happy to share. This is a combination of two Raphidophora. Uh, one was Megalaster variegata, and the other one I don't remember. As you can see, one of them is very, very light, almost like a Whipple Way type of variegation, and the other one just has more normal looking variegation. But one of my friends actually loves these types of plants, Raphidophora, he collects them. So I've given this to him. He just has to come pick it up. These leaves can get huge and get lots of holes, a little bit like um, Monstera leaves as well, I think. But I've never taken care of Raphidophora before. So in my care, they're 
not doing that yet. I'm going through these a little bit fast because a lot of them are also just propagations. This is a glass of water propagation of this beautiful Hoya Meredithi that also started to grow. And I have some Alocasia rescues. This is a little Alocasia cupria. It was like this in the pot with no roots. I popped it in water. I saw that I think with Fern in one of her videos. And as you can see, it's now growing roots. So it's definitely working. My rescues of Alocasia have always been in like semi-hydro or something. They often dry out too much. Here's another one. I really like that idea. Thank you, Fern. Oh, and the last one in there is a Mykens cutting. Then I have a little Anthurium hookery mint. I'm also giving this to a friend who loves them a lot more than I do. I'm making a lot of space on these shelves. This one is so cool. This is Begonia Milanobulata. I moved it into living room conditions recently. It has adjusted so well, much better than I expected. Of course, there are some old leaves that are crisping and browning. Actually, this one as well. But the main leaves are still doing really well. They look beautiful. They are not hanging as they did in the beginning. So I think it's a success. Less of a success is this little Milanobulata cuttings. I wanted to move them into normal humidity as well, but I think it's a little bit too dry for them. This propagation leaf just fell out even. Then another Phalaenopsis orchid, a very small one that I got for a project that I never actually did. This is my very cool green shield alocasia, aka Clepiolata, that is growing a new leaf, by the way. Very pretty. But also, look at all the crazy tendrils coming out here with little corms at the ends. I think it's pretty happy now. And this died back all the way when I got it. It was just a bare stem, no roots, no leaves, nothing. And now it's a full plant again. So gotta love that. This was the orchid that looked super sad in one of my projects, but it was growing a new root, <laughs> first root in forever. And it has a few new leaves that also look dehydrated. Then another Hoya. This is a Hoya Clemenciorum that I also am giving to that same friend of the other Hoya. Look at this new leaf. It is so beautiful. And a dragon scale that actually is still alive or this came back from the dead. I've had a lot of alocasia struggle a lot and I've moved them all to semi-hydro, which seems to be working a little bit better, but still I let them dry out too much. It is growing a new leaf here. So that is amazing. Look at how beautiful. Oh, I'm so happy it's back. Last one on this level are two alocasia Michaeliziana Mexkowski yellow variegated plants, yellow variegated Friedeck. Look at this new one. Two of these didn't have much variegation at all. And both of them are bringing it back. I'm really excited about that because I sold all of them. I needed money a while back and just kept the two that didn't have any variegation or bids. And now it looks beautiful. This actually is so much prettier than what I remembered. So that's very exciting. This is a Hoya Carrie, as people seem to be calling it. I used to call it Kerry with the C, but apparently it's Kari. I'm not quite sure. I love this Hoya. It's such a fast grower. Can you see the new leaves? New tendril here as well. New tendril with new adorable little leaves. It is so fun to grow. It is so fast. It's beautiful. I love it. Highly recommend. And it's in a very, very cute pot. This is actually a cappuccino cup by Natalie. The last Hoya here is Hoya Scortecini. I got this from my friend Aidana and I had no idea about it. I had never heard about it and it is stunning. It definitely stole my heart. The little dots on it are so beautiful. I'm very curious if you guys have heard of these before because I thought I knew all the Hoya, but I definitely didn't. And the last plant here is my Billetier variegata that was not growing for a long time, but it has grown a leaf finally. And what kind of leaf? Look at the beautiful variegation on it. It's a bit hard to show you, but it has several growth points here. Just one beautiful leaf like this just yet. I am so happy that this is finally growing. Apparently it was a little bit stuck underneath the soil. It was not very happy, but it's growing now and I'm hoping to keep it happy. Moving on to my big terrarium here. I have a lot of separate videos about how I set this up, what I have in there for the watering and the light and everything. So we're gonna focus on the plants for this one. And like I said, I'm gonna be filming this on my phone. So switching to phone mode. This place can definitely do with a cleaning and all that stuff but 
as you can guess, I don't have time for that. So let's just look inside and hopefully this terrarium can stay here while we do the renovations. This is my philodendron atapapuensi growing so fast to the top. Look at the red of the back. This does show some signs of pest damage as well, which I know I have in here, some thrips issues. This is the Anthurium forgetti. Ooh, nice yellow leaf back there. It's also making a new leaf, beautiful. Up here is a Hoya Gunungading cutting and some Alocasia. This is Alocasia dragon skill and a Jacqueline that I thought I was finally able to keep happy. But as you can see now, they are also droopy and not so happy. Here is a little, I think it's a Mazdavalia orchid that was flowering before. There's a bunch of plants on the back wall, like Hoya. There's another Hoya. Also this, I forgot the name, Polonia. I think they have a new name now that are crawling up the back. Here is a little pot with Hoya Tomsoni with the white flowers that is not growing a lot, but it has grown a little bit. Oh, look! I had not seen this in a while. This is a Raphidophora cryptantha that was previously looking like this, so I didn't think I was able to grow it. But apparently it started to grow down here, and now it's looking like this. That is amazing. This is philodendron, oh, something with an L, lupinum that is crawling all the way from the bottom. This is a little orchid. It's very, very cute. Let's see. Ornithocephalus cochleiformis. Something like that. This is another little orchid looking very cute. Down here we have the philodendron glorious as well. Also showing some pest damage, but that's okay. In front here, this is Anthurium queermalens. That is actually growing a new leaf. Look at this beauty. People warned me that this was a very, very tricky plant to grow. I have not had many issues in my big terrarium, so that is amazing. Here is also a new, very cute orchid that I forgot the name of. I bought that at Botanica. And a bunch more orchids. I think this is a Bulbophyllum. That is a Phalaenopsis marmorata, I think. And a few more small baby ones growing on this Liana tendril thingy. In the center here, we have a Ruelia macoyana that's growing all over the ground here. And a pink begonia, I have no idea of the name exactly. And a Alocasia black velvet. This stuff I'll show you on the other side, that's easier. Here is a begonia clipiolata, this one. Margravia, little peperomia. And this one I planted in here recently. This is one of the orchids from the orchid terrarium and to begonia also from an other terrarium that i'll show you in a sec oh i just realized i completely forgot to show you this little terrarium okay so let's pop in here real quick this is a small terrarium i made recently in a video and there are some very cute plants in here like this begonia chloronura that i've showed you before this is already growing way too big so that's why i pulled the other ones out there is selaginella antinata crawling all the way up the back this is philodendron. It looks like it has thrips on there. No. Philodendron domesticum variegata is here. Some more micans. Then down there is a maranta, the normal tricolor one. This is a beautiful labisia that's actually growing a new leaf. I had not seen that yet. That's doing really well in here. This is begonia mm, negocensis as well, I think. Looking at the bright pink. Very cool. This is Begonia Amphioxus, which is also doing really well in this terrarium. Surprise, surprise. That's another Begonia Tian Kuang. And some moss and more Selaginella Antinata. How's that for a very, very quick tour? <laughs> All right, back to the big terrarium. So this Begonia G. Wui and this Begonia Raja used to live in that small terrarium, but got way too big for it, as you can see by the size of these leaves. And so I pulled them out and moved them here. They have dropped most of their leaves. So I plopped a few of the leaves down here on the ground to propagate, but I think they're gonna adjust okay. And this is already a new leaf growing. Here's the other jewel orchid that was growing in this terrarium together with this one. Moving to the other side, let's start at the top again. Here is a very, very cute orchid, Dendrobium, that I got from Santino at the Botanica market. Then there are some Hoya in the background there. This is Hoya Nong Nuch. This is a Hoya that does not want to grow for me, but it's not dying either, so that's okay. Up here we have my Cebu Blue, 
with holes and crawling all the way to the top. Is that a thrips? It might be, because we have a thrips issue here. I am treating with good bugs, but especially this Monstera siltopacana and the Queen Anthurium as well. We're struggling a lot with thrips. This is a beautiful cutting as well. I don't know what that is exactly. Some kind of Finlaysoni Hoya and more Hoya on the background. Oh, look at this stunning baby. This is Margravia L. Coca that was growing super slow. Is there a thrips on there? Mother f this is growing super slow, so I moved it a little bit higher so it gets more light. Next to it, a few miniature orchids that I bought at the Botanica Market. These were from Ben's Jungle, and I can't wait to make them look very cute in here. But for now, I'm just hanging them up on the Queen Anthurium because I don't have time. I'm sorry. Then there are some, oh, Peperomia, String of Turtles. I forgot the name. And... Hoya linearis, which I thought would look cool in here. Here are the miniature orchids from the other side. This one especially is growing pretty well. Behind there, if you can see, is a beautiful mystery anthurium that was struggling a lot before, but now has this beautiful new leaf open. So I'm excited about that. On the back wall here, this is the blue oil fern that apparently is very, very tricky to grow. But look here! It's growing a lot of new leaves, so that's very exciting. There's also a bunch of algae, or I don't know exactly what it is. It almost looks like salad or lettuce or something, but I like it. There's a micans growing here and some ficus. Oh, I forgot the name. They're like the small oak leaf, miniature oak leaf ficus. On the side here, we have a Hoya elliptica and a little jewel orchid. This is Anoctochilis Roxburghi crossed with Laodicea discolor. Here's another miniature orchid that I don't know the name of that's very, very dry. It's not looking great. And a little Syngonium that is finally growing as well. This is Syngonium raja or Wenlingeri. One of the two. It's coming all the way from down here. While we're here, this is Calathea mosaica. The only Calathea that I'm able to keep alive are in my terrarium, no surprise. This is some kind of little fern that also looks very dehydrated. I definitely have to spray in here very quickly. This is the Raphidophora cryptantha that I was talking about before as well, that just does not look very nice, except in that one spot. There's a begonia back there, there's some Selaginella. Oh, is this a new leaf? That actually looks quite nice. This is that mosaica as well. This one is of course stealing the show. This is Selaginella wildenaui that is crawling all over the bottom. And look at the blue color. I love it so much. Ooh, don't get stuck on my fungus gnat trap. I'm very, very happy that this is growing so well because I had no idea what I was doing when I popped it in here. So yay for you. Underneath it is a little silver dragon, Elocasia, which I love as well. And a beautiful Ludicia that is showing some signs of not being happy. Mainly, I think, because of the thrips that are in here. I'm actively treating them with good bugs, but it takes quite a while for it to actually work. It already looks a lot better in here than it did before, so it's gonna be okay. I trust the good bugs. Down here are some of the most beautiful plants I think that I have in here. This is a Labicia rhino skin. I think that's what it's called. You can see why, or dino. Some people call it dino as well. It's a little bit confusing. In the back here is Ludicia turtleback, which is sizing up now. I love to see it. And here is a begonia turtle something that struggled a lot since I bought it last year at Botanica, but it's finally starting to look happy now. I love it. How cute is that? This is a begonia species china that came back from the dead. This is a labicia that looks really sad at the moment, but hopefully will come back. This is a beautiful uh, agrapantha something that's growing a new leaf. It was a little bit overtaken by the selaginella, but I think it's coming back. It's okay. This one in the front here is the gogoensis that I was talking about before. This is such a beautiful begonia. I love it so much. Here's a baby leaf. This is begonia ferox that is not showing any signs of being ferox at the moment, which is weird. We have a little forest spirit down there. This is a labicia hiding a little bit underneath the dead leaves. And then this is the begonia species taiyun kuang that gets really nice and blue in dark situations. This was the one that was in the cloche before, but now here it looks 
so much better. And same with this one. I showed you the propagations, but this is where they are shining. I love this place so much. I'm a little bit sad about this thing, but it has to be done. Oh, we forgot a Labisia back here. I got all my Labisia either from Ruperobe or from Friends. I love them. They're so fun, even though I don't know yet what I'm doing with them. And then the last plant in here that I kind of skipped over already is my big Queen Anthurium Chloe. As you can see from this older leaf, she's struggled a lot with thrips. They've gone all crispy and sad and almost yellowing. The new leaf came out while I was still treating the thrips, but as you can see, most of the leaf actually looks pretty perfect. Only here at the top are there severe thrips damage signs. So I thought it was going pretty well with the thrips treatment, except we now found one on that little plant. So I'll have to keep an eye out and put some more predatory mites in, but I love this plant. I bought this as a tiny baby. I'm so happy I have this. This is actually the reason that I got this huge terrarium because she was getting too small for the small terrarium that I'll show you in a sec. And I knew I wanted to keep growing her in a terrarium setting. So thank you, Chloe. Let's switch back to the camera. Most of the plants in my living room live over here and underneath my big Soltec aspect grow light because this is about five meters away from my south facing window and it generally doesn't get enough light unless you are an anthurium. Speaking of, let's start with Chris. This is my biggest, I think, anthurium leaves. This is my crystallinum that I grew from seed and I'm so impressed with how big he's gotten. Not just these two leaves. Also the new leaf is huge. Although it got a little bit damaged because in living room conditions, they can get stuck and then struggle to come out. And any damage that is tiny on a baby leaf, when the leaf expands into a big leaf, it becomes bigger as well. But that's okay. We still love him. So far, he seems to be very happy in this spot. And that's why I also moved this guy over here. This is Alfonso, my Anthurium forgetti. Here's the new leaf. It is so cute. I thought if I move this here, it has more space, less humidity, but the leaf still came out okay. And hopefully the leaves will grow even bigger because these are already pretty big, as you can see here, but I'd like them to be even bigger. Underneath the Aspect Soltec Grow Light, I've created a little jungle corner, even though this was supposed to be my boyfriend's plant corner, don't tell him. <laughs> I think he noticed. This is my Philodendron Splendid called Spencer, which is growing on a moss pole. The leaves are really thin and long, which I didn't expect. The Melanochrysum seems to be coming out a little bit more than the Varicosum. I love how long it is. I just didn't expect it or something. I don't know. It is growing pretty slowly at the moment. Here's some of the more smaller leaves because I have three plants on one pole. I actually grew this from a wet stick that I got from a friend. I love him. Then we have this beauty. I grew this from a seed that I pollinated myself with a friend. This is a species affinity Bessier hybrid. We forgot what we pollinated with, but my friend Ronja thinks that it was a papillae laminum. Based on the shape of the leaves, I think Papillae laminum is a good guess. Here is a new leaf. Look at how red that is. That is just so beautiful. And it's come out safely. It was stuck a little bit in the living room. I sprayed it a few times to help it out and it just slid out. This little baby is Anthurium wenlingeri, which I was able to buy recently for about 80 euros which I was very, very happy with. These are very hard to find and it's pretty big already. I had this in my small terrarium, which I have my like most valued plants in, but it seemed to not really like the higher humidity. It's now growing a new baby leaf here, but in the higher humidity, it seemed like the new leaves were dying off. So I've moved this into the living room and now the new leaf is coming out okay. So interesting to experiment with. This is my regular and theory this is my regular Elocasia Michaeliziana Mexkowski, so the green, what we call Friedeck, but Friedeck is actually only the name for the white variegated one, which I will show you in a minute, because I own no, I'm very happy. This is just a little pot in semi-hydro again with two plants in there, one small one and one bigger one. I love this Elocasia. I love many Elocasia, but not all of them love me back. This is Hoya Nicholsonier New Guinea Ghost, also known as NGG. <laughs> and this was 
really struggling along. I got this as a tiny cutting. It died back, it died back, it died back until I had one leaf left, not even a stem, just one leaf. And from that one leaf, it grew again, which I was impressed by in general. And then I propagated and made a fuller pot. And now it's this whole plant. So beautiful plant. This Hoya is Hoya pot of gold also known as Latifolia Inner Variegated. This was struggling a lot for me. And since I moved it out of the terrarium as well, it has started to grow so much more. Look at all these new leaves. This hasn't even hardened off yet. And there's a few more at the top here. I also love it when you give this a little bit more light because it gets almost pinkish red. And hmm, I love it. If I were to put it a little bit higher up on the little table so it's closer to the light, it might get that sun stress again but for now I'm gonna leave it because I have to remove the light probably in two weeks anyway. Then from all the way in the back corner is my yellow variegated Adansoni, which I'm also getting rid of. I don't know, Adansoni don't spark joy for me. Even though seeing this now, I love it and I'm gonna be happy to remember this, like have this video to see it again because it is a absolutely beautiful plant. I got this from a friend as a cutting, it just, it's not my favorite. I have others that I would prefer to keep. And since I most likely have to move all of these plants to another location, not even inside the house, because there's no space, somewhere else and set up a temporary solution for them there, I think this one can go. Say hello and goodbye at the same time. A beauty. Back here, we have a few more. This I've showed you before as well is my stunning. Hoya clemenciorum, look at the size of this leaf. It's grown a few leaves over, oh, it's growing a new leaf. I don't think I'll be able to show you, but there's a new leaf growing here. And I tied up the tendril a little bit like this to try and support it because you always want the tendril to have some support. That's when they start to grow leaves again. Hoya clemenciorum is definitely one of my favorite Hoyas of all time. It's just, it's just so beautiful. It looks like Jurassic Park. I love it. I love you. Lastly, in this corner, ooh, in a very cute pot, we have my Philodendron Glorious. This is the main plant. This took so long to grow again, but now it has two new leaves. This one is the top cutting, and this one was one of the bigger stem cuttings. Jan's Glorious is so big. It is incredible. So. I'm giving good vibes to this one to also turn into that. I forgot about this one. I have a little very cute Groot pot with a air plant in it as hair. I literally never water this, so I'm surprised it's still alive. I don't really know how to take care of these, but I thought it looked very cute. Someone gave this to me and I like it. Up there on the shelf is also a Hoya Lacunosa. Look at that beauty. This one gets ignored a lot yet it grows a lot and it flowers a lot. And the Lacunosa flower smell is my absolute favorite Hoya smell. This guy just keeps on flowering and smelling divine. I love it. Last one in this corner was already in the back a little bit. This is Rupert, my Philodendron Florida Beauty that has grown so much over the past two years, I think I've had him. Look at all of these beautiful leaves. I got him as a one leaf cutting that was rooted, but not yet growing. Actually, the oldest leaves have died off recently since I moved him into the living room from the terrarium. But this is one of the smallest leaves that he still does have. This one as well. It's growing really well on the moss pole. The only thing with this plant is that it is prone to fully yellow leaves. If needed, we'll just chop it back to reactivate the green. Next to my terrarium is this beauty, which also was grown from a very, very small leaf and cutting up a moss pole to now this is the most beautiful leaf, I think. This is Philodendron Majestic. So a hybrid between Vericosum and Soderoi, I think. The newest leaf is a little bit damaged. I think it got stuck coming out, which I didn't see. And then here is one more new leaf unfurling. This has rooted a lot in the moss pole. I think it's so beautiful. This is another one that I didn't expect. I didn't know about this plant. I didn't know it had the shimmer. It looked like this. 
it's amazing. And it lives right next to the terrarium, so it doesn't get a lot of light, it doesn't take up a lot of space. Then inside this small terrarium, I use this more as a prop box than a terrarium, so it's not planted and I can take all the plants out to show you. This is Hoya Bella Amicabaus which has still got the flower open. This has been open for like a month, I feel like. It's so beautiful. And the Hoya itself is also very beautiful. I have a tiny little cutting of Hoya Bella Lidabaus here that was not doing well. And some propagations of Lidabaus that are looking a lot better. This plant had root rot, so I had to restart it. And I'm hoping it's gonna be okay. Next up is Hoya Burmanica which is a little bit hard to show you. I love the leaf shape. I love how fast it's growing and it's already budding up there as well, even though I propagated this recently. <coughs> My voice is not voicing. Ooh, this has a lot of new growth. This is Hoya peninsularis, previously known as species Pirac teddy bear. And it has finally started to grow again after some issues with flat mites. So there's a new tendril here, but I also spotted at the top here that it's growing some new leaves there as well. This is Hoya Rinci Borneo, which also had the same flat mites issue. Look at that. It is so shimmery and velvet. It's growing a new leaf here, which you see some white on because I just broke it a little bit against the side. Whoops. Here is another new leaf and a tendril. So it's finally starting to look beautiful again. This is like maybe my top, top Hoya ever of all of them. This is Hoya Waimaniae. And I love this Hoya, especially ooh, if it's not sun stressed. So like this, when it gets sun stressed, it gets some kind of pattern that I really don't like. Ooh, here is a dead cutting. It does not always work out. I'm turning you around because I think the light is a little bit better this way. This is another anthurium. This is Papillilaminum legend Sipanas crossed with Papillilaminum old clone. And here is the latest leaf. How beautiful is that? It is so red and velvety and I love the shape as well. So whoop, I keep throwing around the good bugs. Sorry, buddies. I moved this in the little terrarium because I wanted to look at it more. I love it a lot. I want it to size up quickly. So I want to keep my eye on it. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, my voice is not working. Then another very special little plant. This is my Monstera obliqua from Peru. There's a new leaf in the center there. Can you see it? It's got moss in the pot as well, which I think is adorable. <laughs> it is browning a little bit quickly. All the leaves have this browning. I don't know if that's normal. If any of you grow these plants, let me know, please. Even though it's in a terrarium with enough light and maybe too much light, maybe that's it. Because the humidity is great. The airflow is great in here. I have fans. So the only thing I can think of is it's too much light. This is Anthurium Carla Blackie crossed with Dressleri. And I'll have some more numbers. Carla Blackie number seven crossed with Dressleri RGF2. These ones I grew from seed. Carla Blackie crossed with Dark Phoenix, which is a Papillae Laminum, I think, hybrid. There's two little plants. Very, very cute. As I've said before, with Anthurium, often with the seedlings, you can't really tell the genes just yet when they're small, even though this one is definitely showing the Luxurians gene. This is Anthurium Dark Phoenix crossed with Luxurians Platinum. Two plants again. Oh, nay! <sighs> Why do I do this? There is finally new growth on this Hoya Michele. Apparently it was just starting to grow here and I broke it off Why getting it. That is so annoying. Also, if you wanna see the pest, it is a type of small scale that is very hard to get rid of. I've been treating so far mostly with alcohol wipes. So I'm gonna do that with this plant as well. I'm gonna ask Entocare for the next round for some bugs that can work against little scaly bits because I don't want this to spread. Another very, very special Hoya. This is Hoya Svetlana that I bought in Stockholm from Osa. And as you can see, it's growing a new leaf. So I got this with one leaf. It grew one leaf for me and then didn't do anything for a long, long time. But now it's got another leaf coming. 
and a little tendril. So I'm very excited about that. This is so beautiful. In the corner of this terrarium, we have this little adorable little philodendron. Burl Marks Fantasy, a fungus gnat just flew in your face. <laughs> I wiped it away for you, it's okay. Look at how pretty this is. I got these, there's two plants on here as very, very small, oh, three actually. There's a baby here as well. Um, very small plants that were growing so slow and I finally decided to just pot them on a moss pole. I do see roots growing on the back. So hopefully that's gonna help this plant to size up a little bit more. The beautiful pattern, which also kind of looks like chlorosis, like the plant is hungry, needs some fertilizer or nutrients but that is the pattern of the small plant. Once it gets bigger, it actually loses that pattern, just like micans loses the velvetness. And then the last plant in this terrarium is a little bit damaged, but this is Mycarla blackiae anthurium. Look at it. Oh, I got this from a friend. It is still very, very small, but if you know anything about anthurium, you'll know Carla blackiae are like still very, very special. This is an A1 selft. I can't wait for it to get bigger, also to not be so damaged because the leaves so far are quite damaged. And the other ones that I got from the same person have no issues. So maybe it's extra sensitive or maybe it's just the law of your most valued plant <laughs> gets the most damage. It just happens that way a little bit. On this side of the room, there are not a lot of plants. The first one is my beautiful King of Spades Anthurium. This guy is stunning, although <laughs> his latest leaf is very weird looking. It got stuck a lot, I think due to lower living room humidity. I have good faith and hope in this plant recovering again. Another adorable little one that lives here right next to the TV on the corner is this variegated skin dapsis. I moved this there because in the terrarium it was getting too much light and you can see here the pattern that I was talking about, the chlorosis of too much light. It can also mean not enough nutrition like I said before. In this case I'm pretty sure it was too much light. This plant has grown so quickly. Look at the beautiful variegation on it. It's two cuttings that are growing on here. There is definitely some browning happening since I moved it out of the terrarium humidity into living room conditions, but I'm okay with that. The newest leaf had also browned off. I don't know if it wants to focus on that, but this is, well, I can take it off to show you. This is browned, but hopefully it's gonna grow a new leaf again. We will have to wait and see. Then we have this beauty. This is my anthurium pallidiflorum. Pauly D is his name, which I have unfortunately damaged a lot recently. This leaf is a little bit sad. It is currently held together with some sticky tape. It's still very floppy. I threw this plant over. This is the old leaf that also broke off from me sitting against it all the time. So I really hope that the next leaf that you're growing is gonna be happier. Last plant over here is my Elocasia zebrina variegata. Variegata, variegated. This has grown very big, as you can tell. Most of the leaves are fully green, but it has grown this leaf recently, which is beautifully variegated. It is more of a yellow variegation. And there is another new leaf on the way here that I tried to see if it has variegation, but I can't really see yet. Then over on the other side of the living room, we have a few plants. This is a two-piece Anthurium Forgetti Dark little pot that actually I have sold. Someone is coming to pick this up. This is my amazing Hoya Thompsoni Splash with light pink flowers. Not as pink as the pink Thompsoni, but they are a little bit pink. This has been growing pretty well. Can you see the new leaves there? It also was developing a few peduncles and buds, but they have died off so far. Maybe next year I'll get flowers. Behind me on the wall here are quite a few plants. This is a Hoya Sunrise, which doesn't have sun stress at the moment, also because it's not getting that much light up there, but it's growing. On this side is Hoya David Kamingi, which gets very, very cute flowers, but it hasn't flowered in a while, probably because it doesn't get as much light up there. I'm just really trying to only keep plants that really make me happy. So I think this will go. This one I really, really love, except it looks very sad right now. This is Alocasia watsoniana. 
It used to have very big leaves and it's at, at least growing again, but it's definitely not as happy as it was before. Also, this leaf has some damage because it had some thrips and I do see some mealybugs on there now as well. Look at the nice matte look of this leaf. I love that. Up here <laughs> is this Syngonium Grey Ghost. It's grown quite a lot since I got it and some of the leaves are beautiful. But I think this will also be one of the ones that goes. Although, <laughs> I don't know if anyone wants to buy a plant like this. It's growing very angled to the side, but it's a beautiful pattern and I think someone will be very happy with this. This one definitely gets to stay. This is Anthurium Blackjack that I got from an import a while ago and just look at it. It is so beautiful. When I got it, the leaves were this size and now they are this size. How amazing is that? I absolutely love Anthurium. Just look at the velvetness. Oh, also the shimmer. These beautiful pots, by the way, are by Elho. They are made from recycled plastic out of the ocean. And I love Elho in general. The pots are very clean. They can't break, which is a good thing for me. I've broken some of the piece of clay pots several times already. Up here we have a hoi, no, Elocasia Ninja, which is actually very nice on camera. I was thinking of getting rid of this one as well because it's not one of my favorites but it is growing really well. It's so pretty. It's basically like a black velvet. I think the difference is a little silvery line at the edge and a little bit rounder, fatter leaves, but I'm no expert in the differences. I just know that it is a little bit different and I love it. And it's growing a lot better than any of my black velvets before. The only one that I still have is in the big terrarium I showed you, which is not doing great. I think I'm getting rid of this, but I'm not 100% sure yet. Next up, ah. Oh. This is my big yellow variegated Alocasia mycoliziana. Most of the leaves actually are fully green now, but recently it grew. Oh, the sun is shining now. That's making it harder. Wait, this is a tiny baby leaf that is showing some signs of pest damage, but not so much variegation. And then this is a new leaf it grew that is showing signs of pest damage, but also variegation. <laughs> We're not picky over here. And look at this beautiful pot that Natalie made for me. These plants are in those really long pots, which don't fit in any other size outer pot. And luckily she made me this one, which I think is absolutely adorable. This last plant also has one of her pots and I'm actually quite scared about these pots, how they'll do during the renovation. I'm probably gonna store them in a corner where I don't think people will come. The little legs are quite fragile. I've broken several off already. So I'm not only worried about myself, my cats and my plants, but also about my plant pots that I want to keep because they are so beautiful. Anyway, <laughs> the plant that is in here is my Philodendron El Shoco Red, also known as Rubri Juvenile, I think is the official name now. This plant has grown quite fast for me. I think it's grown two leaves so far and it's already sizing up a lot. I don't know if you can see the difference. These leaves are the ones that they had. This one is the newest one and it's not even hardened off yet fully. I have it on a moss pole, which it really seems to like. I see a lot of roots in the moss there. And I saw a lot of roots coming out as well at the base where I put some more moss around the stem, which is activating more aerial roots to grow. So I'm very, very happy that I found this for 25 euros at a local garden center. I absolutely love it. Ah, oh, the red backs, just the velvetness of it. This sits on my table here where I work every day. Every day I look at it and every day it makes me happy. One more little pot that I forgot to show you is this pot that my boyfriend 3D printed for me, which I think is adorable. This is a little sedum inside it, which is not ideal because it's definitely not getting enough light there even though it's growing a few new babies. You can definitely also see this is etoliating, I think is the word, <laughs> etoliated. I don't know. I'm no succulent expert, but there's a lot more space Ooh. between the leaves than there is here where it was still in the greenhouse where it was getting full sun. So I'm going to find this a better place, maybe in the greenhouse. This is Hoya Curtisi, which is growing quite well in semi-hydro, I had to restart it, like I said before, in another 3D printed 
pot. By the way, my boyfriend for this uses recycled plastic to print. We're not just making more plastic waste. We're using plastic waste to make new pots. Then over here lives my beautiful Hoya Meredithy, the big one, the IML, no, GPS 1105. I looped this around to hopefully get some support at the tendrils again, because this was tendrilling all over the place. Now the tendrils are attached again, so hopefully they're gonna grow some new leaves. It already grew some new leaves, and I love them. I love this plant so much. I'm so happy it's growing well. It makes me happy. Then over here, we have a hanging Hoya pot that I think I'm also gonna get rid of. This is a combination pot with Hoya Bur Species Affinity Bertoniae here. And then this one is a regular Hoya Huskeliana. And then this is the variegated Hoya Huskeliana. And there is one in here that is the real Hoya Bilobata. Yeah, the actual Bilobata. Then we have a few variegated Monstera cuttings. These ones, these are cuttings of Luna, which I think I showed you already in the chores repot video that I propagated her. These are currently one node cuttings that I'm growing out for the video, also because nobody wanted to buy them. Nothing to do with you, beautiful plants, you're amazing. And there is one more, this one. So that's gonna be an interesting video if I can find a spot where they get enough light to continue growing, of course. That's always the question. Ugh. This is my pot that I also showed you in the repot with philodendron plowmanii over there and over here. I love this one so much, especially because of the little ruffles like right there in front of my nose. Can you see the ruffles? It's so pretty. Down here is a little pasta zanum baby and here as well, two or three pasta zanum plants in this pot. And of course the philodendron neon. <sighs> okay. Let me put this down. Oh, by the way, it's making a new leaf. Can you see? New plumani leaf right there. Ugh. Next is the same pot, just a little bit less long with all my gloriosums in it. Look at them all shining. Oh, I love philodendron gloriosum. It's such an easy plant. Here are a few babies that I planted at the bottom, stem cuttings that started to grow. And there's also, I don't know if we can focus on it, but a philodendron lemon lime in here that's also known as some other names. The main star definitely is the philodendron gloriosum. This is the newest leaf. And there's two plants, big plants in the pots, but a few more babies now as well. <coughs> We're almost there. I hope you're still with me. This is turning into a very, very long video. This is my Aurea monstera. So the yellow variegated Monstera Deliciosa. The newest leaf has nice variegation over here. I'm trying to give this a little bit more light because that's one theory to get them a little bit more variegation because it doesn't have that much. But it seems to like being on a moss pole a lot. Can you see all the roots in there? Amazing. And even out the pot they're climbing. So it's definitely a happy plant. I hope I can give it enough light in the temporary space as well. Are you ready for my biggest two plants? The last I uh, three more I have to show you. Two of them are huge. So this is Fetty, my variegated Monstera. Ugh. Let me pop him on here. So it's a little bit more doable. Can you see him? No, the sunshine is messing all of this up. Okay. Let's start small then. We'll wait and for the sun to be gone because it's the Netherlands. It won't take that long. <laughs> this is my actual fried egg, Elocasia mycolitiana fried egg. This is the white variegated one. Beautiful, beautiful plant. This was the latest leaf, but now it has another leaf on the way and I can already see it has a similar pattern of mottled variegation that I absolutely love on this one. It definitely has a lot more variegation than the yellow variegated one that I showed you before. It's just very cool. I love it. I'm very happy with it. This one, I'm also quite worried about moving because it's an alocasia. <sighs> it will be okay. Everything will be okay. Can you take my breath away? Okay, let's move over here to show you Ferry. 
This is my original variegated Monstera with a ton of leaves. There's three plants in the pot. The little one over here is the third one. The other two are on this side with a lot of white, but so far there's not a lot of browning because I think of stable conditions, which it's not gonna have for much longer. So we'll see how that develops during the move. Temporary location, but I love him. I love him so much that I'm carrying this huge pot to show him to you. <laughs> and then the last one, another huge pot. This is my philodendron, no, what am I saying? This is my Monstera Thai constellation named Thais. And, <laughs> okay, this is a workout. I need a nap after this. <sighs> I put him on a pole recently, repotted more space for the roots and also a pole. And he seems to really like it because within a few weeks, he grew a new leaf. Can you see it here? Yesterday, the leaf went from being a point going up to flopping over to down. So I think this will definitely be unfurled properly before we have to move him. I can't wait to see how many holes it has because the previous leaf definitely was getting more and more fenestrations. I'm also curious to see if it has more sectoral variegation because I do see, can I show you? Because I do see a little patch there of full white on part of the leaf. So I'm very excited to see that. And that's it for this tour. I haven't done a full one like this in forever. So thank you so much if you made it to the end. Please let me know in the comments which plants you enjoyed seeing the most or if you have tips for plants during a big home renovation. I would love to hear. Give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already and consider joining my Patreon if you wanna have a monthly Zoom call. Hi to all my patrons and members. Nice to see you. Hi, Editing Rose here from Renovation Chaos. I just wanted to give you a final count information. It was 180 normal plants. Some of them were quite small. Then in the terrarium were 68 in total and in the greenhouse, 50 plants. So that is a lot more than I expected. I currently have a lot less in my house, but I will show you videos about that very soon. Let's go back to before renovation, organized and clean rows. Thank you all so much for watching and see you next week in another planty video. Bye!